Welcome! Unreal Engine 5.5 just made color changing and cloners easier than ever with effectors. Today I'll show you my process for creating a simple infinity loop animation. Let's get started. Go ahead and go to File and then hit New Level. Choose Basic and hit Create. Now use this drop down menu to select Motion Design. If you don't see Motion Design in this menu, make sure your plugin for Motion Design is enabled. Then go ahead and go to Actors and choose Cloner Actor and drop one into your scene. Go ahead and select it and then let's zero out its location and rotation. We can go ahead and delete this floor as well. And now I want to change these default cubes so I'm going to add a 3D shape here. Go ahead and select Sphere and then drag one into the scene. Now scroll down till you see Mesh Size and hit this lock button and choose Free. Now let's give the X a value of 10, the Y a value of 75, and the Z a value of 100. And now we got a long skinny egg. Go ahead and select that sphere again and hit motion design mode. This will pop up buttons here. It will also pull up a sequencer and it will put you into motion design viewport. I like to work in default viewport. And I want to add an operation stack. So now make sure your sphere is selected and then hit add modifier. Go ahead and choose taper and let's make this amount 0.8. Nice, and now we can go ahead and drag this into the cloner and delete our default cube. Now with the cloner selected, change the layout from grid to circle and let's make the count 15. Now we need our shape to lie flat, so go ahead and select the sphere again and let's go ahead and zero out its rotation. We can zero out its location as well. And let's just make the rotation on the y-axis 90. And now we've got some flat shapes with the tapered part pointed inward. We can also increase the scale here to three. Nice, and so now I wanna rotate these so they're not intersecting. So go ahead and select the cloner and scroll down until you see effector and hit Create Linked Effector. Let's go ahead and change the shape of the effector from sphere to unbound so it affects the whole cloner at once. We can also see that now the color is taking effect here. Now before I change that, I'll just set the rotation. So let me make this 15 on the x-axis. And now we can see that the shapes are no longer intersecting each other. Now let me change the color of these and this will be the base color of the petals. Now I copied out RGB values and I will place them in my description below if you would like to copy my color palette directly. I'm going to go ahead and paste that color in now. Now let's go ahead and add another effector. So select the cloner and scroll down, hit create linked effector again. And let's go ahead and hit F2 to rename this effector. I'm going to call it effector underscore color. And so now if I were to pull this effector over, we can see that the color is changing. Let me go ahead and put my peach color into the color there. Nice. Now I'm going to need to add a spline and a sphere with the effector linked to the sphere going in a circle to create an infinity loop. But before I do that, I'll add a camera and some background and lighting. So go ahead, use this drop down menu and select cinematic and then sin camera actor. And let's go ahead and zero out the camera in our scene. Now let's go ahead and rotate the camera negative 90 degrees on the Y axis. And we can drag and drop this into our sequencer. And I'm just going to scroll back so that I can see my shape. I'm also going to increase the focal length to 100. Scroll back again. And now we can go ahead and key our transform here. So now let's go ahead and delete the lighting in our scene so that we can add our own. Use this drop down menu, select lights and rectangular light. Let's go ahead and increase the source width to 500 as well as the source height. Go ahead and zero it out so that we can see where it is. Let's make the rotation for the Y axis negative 50. And then let's pull it backwards. 
Let's raise this up. And let's make the attention radius 2000. And now let's go back to our camera. Now holding Alt, drag it across, and then hit E and rotate it 180 degrees. So we got one on this side. Then go ahead and select both lights. Hit E, hold Alt, and drag them again. Nice, and so now let's just add a background plane here, and I can hit G to hide my icons. So use this drop down button, select shapes, and then hit plane. And let's go ahead and zero out the plane, and let's scale it to 25. Let's push it back a thousand on the Z axis. And let's go ahead and give this a material. So I'm gonna open up my content browser by hitting control space, and then going to my materials, now I'm gonna right click and create a new material. I'm gonna call this M underscore background. Double click to open it. Hold down three and click to create a color node. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in my blue value that I saved. And now plug this into the base value. And I wanna make this slightly admissive, so I'm gonna hold down M to add a multiply node and drag this into A and the output into a missive. And then I'm gonna change the B value here to 0.2. Now hit apply. And we can go ahead and close out of this. And now we can hit this button since it's selected in our content browser, it will just automatically paste it. Nice, so now let's go ahead and add a sphere to our scene which we'll link our effector to. So use this drop down, select shape, and then sphere. With that sphere selected, let's go ahead and rename this by hitting F2, and I'm gonna call it sphere underscore control, because it will control our effector or move it. So now zero this out, and let's go ahead and shrink the scale to 0.5, and make sure that this is locked so that it scales them all proportionally. Now let's make this material glow, so go ahead and Open up your content browser and right click to create another material. Let's name this M underscore glow one since I already have glow material. Now double click to open it and hit three again to create that color node. Let's drag this into the base color and I'm going to go ahead and add the glow effect that I had, the glow color that I had. I'm going to increase the value here to five. This will make the sphere glow even more. And I want this to glow a lot, so I'm not going to add a multiply, I'm just going to add it directly to the emissive color. And then we can hit apply, and close out. Then hit this button to drop it in there, now we can see the glow is occurring. So now that this is zero, we can go ahead and select our color effector and zero that out too. And now drag this onto the sphere control. So now if I were to move the sphere, the effector will be linked to it. But I want the sphere to move on a spline, so let's go ahead and add that now. Hit this drop down menu and select spline. Choose spline actor. Hit G so that I can see it, there we go. And then click a point and then right click to select spline generation panel. Choose circle and then we can close out of this. Go ahead and select the one point that's off there and hit delete so then we're just left with a circle. Go ahead and close out of this. And now select this spline. Let's go ahead and scale it to 2.25. And I'm going to pull it so that it's in the center. And now in order for the sphere to move along this, we need to add the sphere to our sequencer. So go ahead and select the sphere control and drag and drop it into here. Then hit this plus button and choose path, new binding, and select that spline actor that we just created. Let's go ahead and drag this to frame zero. And so now when I hit play, you see the effector is happening. But we're not seeing the effect, and that's because this spline is too high above. So let's go ahead and just make it 100 above. And then we can select our cloner here. 
if I were to just play this again. Oh. We can drag the effector down a bit so that it's now a little bit lower than our spline. And now we can see the effect is happening much nicer. So this is happening a bit too fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase our timeline here to 650. Now let's drag this out to 600. And I'm gonna drag this out as well. Now I'm gonna have this circle twice. So let's go ahead and drag this to 300. In order to make it happen twice, we need to add the path binding again. So go to path, new binding, and add actor. And that's just important because if you hit the path two, it just stops at one. So you just have to do it twice. So now if I hit play, we're getting a slower and it looks nicer, but right now it's easing out and easing in. So in order to fix that, if I were to show you this on a graph, you can double click here and we see that there's a curve and we want this to be straight. So go ahead and select your keyframes by dragging and clicking and then hit four. And now if I pull up the gra graph, you can see that it's a straight line, which is great. So now when I go ahead and play this, we get a consistently moving, we get a consistently moving sphere. And that's looking great. So now we just need to add a post-processing volume to our scene. And the first thing we need to do is, is type in unbound and check infinite extend. This will make sure that whatever we do affects the whole scene. So now under lens here, under bloom, check on intensity and let's give this a value of two. Let's also change the method. So check that on and use convulsion. This is good for cinematics as it will increase the quality. Let's go ahead and check on Convulsion Scatter Disperse, and let's give this a value of 2. That will make it look a little bit more dreamy. And now, check on Exposure Compensation, and let's give this a value of 0. Check on Min EV100 and Max EV100, and we'll give them a value of 0 as well. We'll increase our lights in a second, but first let's go ahead and under local exposure, go ahead and check on detail strength and let, let's give this a value of 1.25. That really heightens the glow there. And now lens flares, let's go ahead and get rid of this lens flare. I don't think it's helping the effect. So check on intensity and make this zero. One other thing I like to do is just type in quality and then increase the, the qualities here. Just like to make them two. This one a hundred. And now let's go ahead and select our rectangular lights here. Can exit out of quality and let's give them a value of 20. Let's try 15. And I'm happy with that. So now let's go ahead and hit play. Nice. And so now I want the effector to affect more than just the color. So let's go ahead and select our effector color and scroll down till you see mode. Let's go ahead and make the offset negative 50 on the X axis and 45 degrees on the rotation. Let's also increase, increase the scale to 1.2. And now let's go to shape here and let's change it from linear to in out quad. And this will just add a little bit more subtlety. I'm gonna go ahead and make the inner radius one. And so now let's hit play. Nice, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the outer radius to 300 to give it a little bit more of an effect. Now you have a satisfying infinite loop animation. If you learned something new, please like this video. If you want more tutorials, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.